Hi, Linda. Hello, how are you? <coughs> Welcome, everybody, to the Rye Town Council meeting of August 15th, 2017. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Father, bless this assemblage. Grant us the wisdom to make our every decision fair-minded and in the best interest of all its residents. Thank you. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Mm -hmm. Cal Councilperson Nancy Jackson. Here. Councilperson Thomas Nardi. Present. Councilperson Nancy Jackson. Here. Councilperson William Villanova. Here. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman. I'm here, too, finally. Adoption of minutes. I hope everybody's read them. If there are no corrections or additions, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on non agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next uh, item resolution A. Uh, Columbus Day celebration. This is what we, uh, this is uh, <coughs> an amount of uh, $1,500 that we, uh, the town gives to celebrate Columbus Day. It's an amount, uh, it's a donation that we make each and every year. Um, may I have, this is our budgeted amount, by the way. Uh, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, now we have a series of tax certs. Um, <clears throat> the first, uh, Jeff, why don't you just give an overview. What are these? Uh, and then we'll go through them one by one and, and, and vote are, on them. Okay. These are very, what I would characterize as very minor tax certs with refunds um, that are in, that are in each one of them, uh, I believe is less than $10,000 in, in actual refunds. So these are very minor matters. What, what we're doing now, and I'm, I'm not quite sure if in the past this was done, any tax cert of any amount is coming on the agenda and we're doing this by resolution. So um, the first one, um, Denise, is that a residential or commercial? Um, 70 Dural. 70 Dural, that's residential? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's residential. Well, obviously, it's, it's a residential building, but it's owned by a, a, uh, corporation. By a corporation. And non -on -on, I believe it's non-owner occupied as well. I, therefore, would, I would guess so. Therefore, it doesn't qualify for SCAR. Small claims. Okay. Um, anyway, so uh, let's go through these one by one. This is um, uh, for 70 Doral Green in Rybrook. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, just a quick uh, other question. These, just a blanket question. These, uh, the certs, all of these were discussed with the school districts? There is no opposition to any of them. Perfect, thank you. The um, <coughs> next one is for um, 20 Orchard Street in Portchester. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. second. Oh. Did I say all in favor? No, no you can't. No. Oh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the next one is for, uh, I know it's 36 Summit Avenue in Porchester. Motion and a second, please. I'll so make a motion. Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The next one is for 12 Clinton Street in Porchester. Motion and a second, please. Make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 
That finishes the uh, tax service. Thank you. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, next one is a resolution for landscaping services. Uh, Debbie, you wanna uh, just give a brief summary of what this is? Yes, uh, the, uh, as, as many know, the um, landscaping services, cutting the lawn, trimming of the flower beds has been um, outsourced um, since the middle of the uh, last administration. Um, the uh, firm that has been conducting those services for the town is, was Greenway Property Services. Um, this spring we ran a, a, an RFP for landscaping services as well as uh, tree cutting and clearing and snow clearing. Um, so this is the landscaping portion of that. We had five uh, firms that entered proposals and Greenway Property Services was the lowest responsible bidder. Thank you. Now this, <coughs> for the information of the board, this does not include snow clearing, correct? That's correct. Okay, and this is for um, uh, Crawford Park, and this is for the cemeteries. Yes, okay. correct. What's the duration? And also the additional services. <coughs> Three years. And starting when? Uh, as soon as we sign it. Uh, I just noticed that there's an error. Oh no, it's not an error. I was reading an error. It specifically excludes uh, Rye Town Park. Okay. That's correct. Okay, very good. <coughs> you said it doesn't include snow plowing. Correct. Who's responsible it does not. for snow plowing? At That's Crawford? that will be a separate. That will be a separate because award. Because Greenway doesn't do it. That's correct. Well, they have been. They will not be doing it in the future. So we're going to look for a separate bid for snow plowing. We got bids. We're just not awarding this yet. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. I'll second. This time we'll call the roll. Mm -hmm. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. Councilperson Baxter? Yes. Councilperson Villanova? Uh, yeah, yes, but I just want to have this, uh, this amended uh, to show the dates of, the, of uh, service. Uh, so should that be August 2017 to August 2020? So I would support that as amended. Or do you want to do September 1st? Your call. Well, have they already been? He's, they've, they've been working on a month to month and they're happy to continue to do that. So, so why don't we just say September 1st? Very good. 2017 yeah. through, uh, did we say? September 1st, uh, 2020. 2020. To August 31st. Okay, August 31st, 2020. 2020. Perfect. Thank you. I support that. Thank okay. you. Okay. As amended. As amended. Okay. Mr. Supervisor. Um, yes. Let me. Uh, can I just go back to one thing that uh, Councilmember Villanova uh, raised, and that that's basically the point <coughs> of uh, knowledge of the school district on tax certs. Could I think the, the entire could the entire. We do, could we do this resolution on landscaping first? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you voted on it. No, we, we're in the middle of voting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Let's, let's start the vote again. Okay. As amended. As amended, right? Okay. Councilperson yes. Jackson. Councilperson Nardi? Yeah, okay. Councilperson <laughs> Baxter? Yes. Councilperson Villanova? Yes, thank you. And, and Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes, thank you. Now, Mr. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to add something to, to what I said. Um, and the, and the board should be aware uh, that there are quarterly meetings taking place now and they're scheduled, already scheduled, and we've had uh, at least two that include the village, the school districts, and um, you know the, the village manager and, and every, all the stakeholders uh, on the municipal side with regard to tax rates. So they're aware of what's coming down. They're aware of the big ones and they're aware of the small ones. So there's an, you know, there's a, there's an enhanced um, information flow. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, how does that affect us as a municipality paying out the other municipalities? Because I know we're used to keep the school districts and villages whole, despite the taxes we receive. 
So we've already paid out the, I guess, the original assessment, the tax rate on the original assessment. I'm not sure I understand the question. The, I mean, the money is coming from from the, the money is coming from the from the. The entities that are levying the taxes against the property owner, right. not okay. necessarily from the town of Rye. Okay. So when right. we make when we make the county whole, that's that's different. That we're collecting those monies. You're talking about that sometimes a little shortfall in October. This is different. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> all right. Reports, Madam Assessor, do you have a report for us? There was a new um, resolution that was added. Oh, I don't have it on my, it didn't come through. Well, it's on iCompass because. Um, it's not on iCompass. It is because I printed it like right from iCompass. This was added on it for. So you yeah, I, I know that it was. You just gotta refresh your button. So. No, it was. <clears throat> Let's go right to the here. let's go to the paper. Um, this was added to the agenda: an authorization agreement for uh, utility expense reduction services. Um, Debbie, just tell us briefly what this is. I know you and I discussed it, and I got to figure out how this works better. Uh, this is a, uh, a, oh, as a matter of fact, I've got um, those folders have information for everybody on them. If you want to write them up. Uh, Troy and Banks um, d conducts um, energy and IT audits um, for municipalities free of charge. Um, any savings they um, glean for us, they will take a small percentage for the next two years, and after that, they. Um, by the way, they, and they help negotiate our bills down to what they feel they should be. Um, that's one level of service that's valuable. The other level of service is that we're beginning a very serious sustainability initiative. And uh, what Troy and Banks will do is give us a baseline as to our energy uses so that when we start to make improvements, we'll have a way of measuring that. Okay, <clears throat> a motion and a second, please. Well, let's, uh, I mean, a couple sure. of questions. So, how, how did we engage this Troy and Banks? Uh, Gary, I think, believe Gary uh, met him at a uh, meeting, and um, he's been, uh, not he, um, the name of the gentleman who calls me regularly, Leonard Tarr, um, has been, uh, came to see me and uh, sent me uh, an extensive amount of material um, on his services and including case studies and recommendations from um, a very large range of municipalities. Is this the only company that provides these kinds of services? No, there are other companies. Why are we going with Troy and Banks and no one else? Really good question. Um, I think that they do um, a very capable job and um, it doesn't gonna, it's not gonna cost the town any funds, and so I thought that we would just go with them. Most, most of these companies um, <coughs> operate the same way. They, they save you money and then they charge a percentage of the savings. <coughs> and this, this company seemed to be a uh, very reputable, and, and Debbie checked them out. I think I met <coughs> them originally at the Association of Towns meeting in the city one a year or so ago, and they've been following up and following up, and, and at this point, we decided to bite the bullet and see if we can save money. Do what they do work elsewhere in Westchester, do you know? Um, certainly all over the state of New York. into some of the other companies who provide similar services? Sort Truth of be told, I did not look into other okay. um, other companies. What's, what's the percentage rate do they want? From our, you know, we're gonna save and they're gonna take a percentage. What's their percentage yeah. rate? I, I don't know, have it on the top of my head. I'd okay. have to take a look. 
Only because I'm thinking, you know, it's almost like the, uh, it reminds me of the solar program, right? So we can engage a solar company and they're going to, you know, they're going to use our property and we're going to get a percentage for the next 10 to 20 years. Um, or is it be more beneficial to the town of Brighton to just buy the solar uh, system? In this sense, you know, we're, maybe we're getting the service for free. But now we're, we're going to be indebted to them. They're going to take a percentage of our savings for a certain amount of time. Um, I mean, does it pay to identify a company that maybe we, you know, would it, without knowing what the savings is, we don't know what the cost is, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, the, uh, the contract is 50%. So it's 50% of the savings? Yes. And but we don't know what the savings might be. We don't. And if there's no savings, they take nothing. Correct. So it's no risk for it's no risk for us. Um, it's a you know, it's. So is there the possibility that there's a, let's just say a different company that that takes thirty percent? So the town of Rye is in a better position after the the uh, assessment or the audit. I don't know. Billy, I would have to say that it's certainly possible that there is a firm out there with that'll take a smaller percentage. Um, it's my sense that this is a fairly standard kind of a practice um, among companies that are all servicing the same space. But you're not wrong. Why don't we just put this off for another month? Debbie, we can investigate other companies and, we'll do. and see, okay? Um, we have to move the table that? I thought there was, hold on. We didn't have a motion in a second, so okay. we well, don't need to. Yes, but it's a, the Sustainability Committee wants to get a baseline. But I was asking you, Debbie, I thought that there was, a, there was a, some urgency here well, to do this a for our grant writer. To, if there's a, is there a timeline that we need to work with it? Well, one of the things that we've talked about at the Sustainability Committee is establishing, like Debbie said, a baseline of what we use and how much we use and is is it really what it should be? And there are companies like this out there, and that's, it came up at our last meeting that, you know, not that right. there's an urgency to it, but this should be one of the next things that we do is to conduct an audit. Well, our data, our usage is not going to change. That, right. I mean, that being said, I mean, I would, I would, I would support and be interested in going forward with Troy and Banks if they're gonna, if what we need is the baseline. If we need it, if what we need is the baseline. We do need the baseline, right? right? If our usage, I, would, I would like to suggest that actually our usage is going to change because we are going to be changing the doors and windows of Crawford Park and we are going to start to put in insulation. So we are going to become considerably more in energy efficient. Um, I would also say that um, if they come back and they negotiate much more competitive rates with our vendors, we could make um, can significant cash savings as well. I mean, I would be, I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead with Troy and Banks uh, to keep the process going. And this is just to engage them to find our baseline. It doesn't mean that we have to mo mo go through with a proposal, correct? Right. Am I, how long do Wait, we Wait, say that again. We okay, are, so it, they'll identify our baseline. They're gonna identify our baseline. Right. We, we, we're not engaged, we're not going to, I don't have the piece of, where'd I go? Give it to Gary. Yes. Oh. We're gonna. Okay. So what? Bear with me a moment. Uh, so what is the what is the what is the contract? Three years. Yeah. All right. So we're if we're engaging into this contract. Do we can can we sever this contract if if you know. The con we're going to go engage it, it with this company, let's just say, on, in September. They're going to do their, their, their work. We don't have to go forward with them. We could say we're, we're out. Well, this is basically what their contract provides is that if they find overcharges, they will get us any refunds or credits for overcharges, uh, and they shall be paid 50% of all monies refunded or credited to us. Future cost reductions is also 50% of the amount saved for uh, a period of 24 months. So basically this is a two-year 
contract. Your contract. Okay. So if we, we sign up for two years and if we find somebody where we can get a better deal. Well, I think we're going to need a better deal because I don't think we're going to need I, to do this after two years. And I think the plus of this is that it allows us to establish that baseline that Debbie talked about, and it also allows us to look and see what we use, and it's, it's not a long-term. It's, it's not a long-term. Two, yes. right. two years. And if after two years we say we want to look for somebody and, else. And, and by then, Crawford Park's going to be done, and Crawford Park's exactly. going to be a lot more energy efficient. Yeah. I, I will pay particular attention as this, thing, as this contract or uh, relationship goes forward as to whether the town needs to take a step back because we're getting into some sort of need to competitively bid. I don't see that at the moment. This is, you know, entails no expenditure of money. Right. Um, however, you know, you can, you know, your imagination can, can sort of run away with you in terms of, you know, what they'll, the information that they may, uh, you know, come across as part of their services to the town and whether you know, that's sensitive information or what. I will keep an eye on this to make sure that the town doesn't need to take any further action on this. But it seems to me at the moment that, you know, it's okay to enter into this. And but have we discussed what sort of um, financial documents or bills they need to see in order to make a determination of how much we've saved? Yeah, they're, they'll, they'll ask for copies of our utility bills. Okay, and it's just the utility bills. And I mean, Tom well, brought- And telephone, cable. Internet. I sure would like to reduce some of our phone bills, I gotta tell you. Yeah. But Tom brought up a great point, which is we're putting all this money into Crawford Park, and as a result, it's going to be a lot significantly more efficient, ideally. How can we determine that the money we're saving is not just the result of the money that we put into Crawford Park, and then this company is going to be taking 50% of that savings without really contributing to some of the... Well, I think that that's a good, interesting question. Of course, Crawford Parks won't start showing those results for a full year. A full year, yeah. Because yeah. we're going to be starting February 1st, and it's going to be a good year. That we, you know something? We could talk to them about this. The fact that I'm auth authorized to enter into a contract does not necessarily mean that we have to enter into the exact contract that they have provided us as a template. We could we could talk about this um, going forward. It's an interesting point. I mean, if you think about Crawford Park being a construction zone right through the mm -hmm. winter, mm -hmm. you know, our our energy usage is going to be go pretty go darn strange. Exactly, it's, it's and you can Yeah, I'm sorry. Open you know, doors, open well, windows. Yeah, you're gonna yeah. you know you're yeah. gonna you're gonna need heat while you're working. I mean, because it's it's uh, you're gonna be under construction. Mm -hmm. um, and I the heating well. system is probably going to be one of the last things that mm -hmm. uh, is going to be done. But what I like about this is that we get we get the baseline in, right? And we can we can tie this to unit unit sales, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Unit usages, so that while our units may be all over the cr all over the rate all over the place, place, right? Our price per unit, our cost per, per unit should be coming down. So they'll ne also negotiate with our providers on our behalf. Yes. We're gonna have to flesh this out. I mean, I'm I'm open to either negotiating with another company or going like forward with this. I'd like to make a motion that we uh, give the supervisor the uh, ability to engage with Troy and Banks. Second. Call the roll, please. Councilperson Jackson. Yes. Councilperson Nardi. Yes. Councilperson Baxter. Yes. Councilperson Villanova. Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman. Yes. Uh, now, reports. Madam Assessor, I know one thing you want to talk about. I do. RPS? Oh, yes. Yes. Good evening, Honorable Supervisor and Town Board. That really is the only one thing I wanted to mention is that, as some of you may know, um, New York State is revamping the uh, RPS assessment database that's used by us and throughout New York State. And they surveyed the assessment community throughout the state and 100 uh, respondents were interested in participating in the pilot program to test the product. And they chose 12 counties and municipalities and the town of Rye was one of those. So we are gonna be a pilot program for the new product 
and that's really exciting. When it comes out in the fall of 2018, we'll have a first crack at it. We'll be able to offer some input, and uh, we're the whole uh, department's really excited about participating in this and helping out and making it the best assessment database it can be. So that's really my only announcement. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Did you before you go away, I just want to uh, thank you. I was contacted over the past month by a uh, by a resident from the uh, from the village of Porchester that was going through a tough time with their property, and uh, reached out to me. I ended up reaching out to Gordon Casement, one of our newest employees in the assessment department, and uh, ultimately Denise got involved. And I want to thank you for the time that you spent with that family. You're welcome. And uh, helping them through that. It's um, stressful time. It's, yeah, it's easy for us to, to understand the process, uh, and it's even harder to explain the process to a homeowner that the only time that they're engaged in it is when they're trying to sell a house or whatever it may be. So, but thank you very much. You're uh, welcome. You made the process a lot easier for them. Good. I'm glad. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Denise. Good night. Um, Crawford Park. Well, we have a lot going on at Crawford Park. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have the official ribbon cutting ceremony for the playground and the sensory garden on what day? September 10th. September Sunday, 10th. September 10th Correct. at 2 p.m. Right. Everybody watching is invited to attend. Um, that should be a very nice event. Uh, we, I guess, since the last meeting, we filed did we filed the CFA after the last meeting, so that that has been done. Um, applying for both the stormwater grant and the Crawford Community Center ADA grant. Um, what else do we have? I think those are the, the main things going on. Uh, oh yeah, we are getting ready, ready by the way, to, um, to bid the electrical work to run the uh, power lines, cable, Fios, all of that underground from Betsy Brown Road to the mansion. And that, that is going to go out to bid, I think. Might be at the end of this month or early See. next month. I think it's the end of this month. Mm -hmm. uh, so that project will be getting underway. We're, uh, we're also working very closely with the Village of Rybrook um, with regard to uh, setting up Crawford so that we can hold our council meetings there and set up a, a, a boardroom as well. So right. we're working very extensively with them <coughs> on IT. I know. Tom, Tom over here has participated mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Fred thank Seifert you. from yep. Rybrook and thank yes, you has. both to, to set up uh, a facility so that we can have our meetings at our very own Community Center. Um, anybody else want to comment on Crawford? Tommy, you have been more involved than anybody else in Crawford Park. And I just want to give you a, a personal thank you for all the work you've done there. Cool. Oh, I, I enjoyed it. <laughs> it took a lot of time. We got the fountain going. We're just waiting for the plantings and playgrounds all set that it's used constantly. Uh, we have the drinking fountain going, the water feature, uh, the pavilion. Uh, we're doing some final touches on the pavilion, just getting some little quirks straightened out. So it's been really moving along, really moving along. I've been there so much. I've been there so much. My wife thinks I live there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice place. Yes, it's beautiful. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. All right. Thank you again. Um, finance, Dave. Do you have a report, or do you want to go? Well, you want to go first, Nick. You want to report, Nick? Report submitted. Thank you. No announcements from you today. <laughs> Next month. Next month. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Receiver. Anything from you, David? Oh, Navy. Okay. You, you, it says finance. It's you know doesn't say accountant. <laughs> and we're we're going to add accountant and finance. Good evening. Um, you have the financial statement package. Uh, the best way to read this is uh, if you pull out the variance analysis that has the letters uh, and then the ex explanations. But I'm going to walk you through. I know you've had this for a couple of days. I'll um, just talk about it at a high level 
So I turn your attention to page five. So page five is basically the summary page. Um, and it's got various columns. The first column is the budget for the whole year 2017 calendar year. Um, the second column is actual, what happened for the first seven months of the year. The third column is the percentage to budget. So, you know, seven months in, you'd expect to be around 57, 58%. Um, the fourth column is prorated. So we prorated what we expect the budget to be seven months in for comparative purposes. And then the next two columns are 2016 activity, the budget, and then actual. Um, the second to last column, or the sixth, uh, the sixth column, is the budget to actual variance. So there we compare where we are for seven months, to the, the prorated column, where we would expect to be. And so as you can see on the revenue side, we're pretty much, we're about $7,700 greater than where we would have expected to be. Now I tell you, the, keep in mind that a good chunk of our revenue will come in later on, our collections and so forth, and <clears throat> that we expect to increase. And as far as our appropriations or our expenses are concerned, we're slightly behind. Uh, we're about $101,000. A lot of that is salaries and just some expenses that we expect to incur later on in the year. But we're still at about 50, the, the third column, 55.6, I'm sorry, 55.8. So we're close enough. Um, so we're trending where we would think to be. Uh, we're at 265, almost $267,000 deficit compared to a $449,000 deficit. And that, again, a good chunk of that is uh, primarily cost savings and timing. Uh, this will turn around in the second uh, half of the year as we start to collect on RAM and different receiverships and so forth. Um, the expenses, for the most part, are exactly what we thought would be. We have some legal expenses that we incurred um, in the first half of the year that weren't budgeted for. But other than that, we're trending exactly where we thought we should be. I can go into detail for every department and tell me what you need me to do. No, I think that's great. And I want to thank you and your team for providing us the variances. I think that's important for us when we look at the, uh, our budgets year to date. Great. And uh, just for your own uh, knowledge, we're starting to work on the budget next month just so that we can get ahead of it. And then we'll have several meetings and reiterations. And we look forward to your feedback and input. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, thank you, Nancy. Go ahead. Sorry, I have no, no problem. one quick question sure. before I because I know this was sort of an issue or question last year in the budget when you talk about the properties in REM. Mm -hmm. So item B um, on the variance page is less properties are going in REM, which is great because we don't want to, you know, be in that situation or have our residents in that situation. Does that mean, would you suggest for the coming year to lower that expected in REM property? I mean, I know it's pretty differs from year to year, right. obviously, and situational. We'll see how the year ends. I think we have some properties that um, we're going to be impacted. I think they go into uh, July 31st. He's going to speak to it. Yeah. But right. I think we'll look to see how 2017 ends and what mm -hmm. properties go in, in REM. There's a bigger class going in as of July. But Talk into the microphone. There's a bigger class uh, as of July 31st, 2017, which you have a report I'll talk to in a, in a few minutes. So as we get uh, collections on those, we'll have updates and get feedback from Dan Tartaglia as far as the status of those properties and if they're, if they're communicating, if they're making payments. So uh, in that November to December timeframe, um, we'll have more information to go by. And then it, uh, you're actually, you know, we, we <laughs> may pull down the budget depending on, you know, where we are at that time. Because I know since um, Paul Noto is um, your pre predecessor was in, he was the one who really got the ball rolling on these in REM, and it wasn't done before. I think people have sort of gotten the hint to pay, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that there are finally consequences. Yeah, th there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. So we'll look at it. We'll look to see, you know, what, 20, what the results final results for 2017 are, look at 2016, see if we can come up with a reasonable estimate uh, based on the facts at hand and, and history. Great. Okay. Thank you, Navy. Appreciate it. Did, now it's Dave's turn. Mm -hmm. So in, in 
in like with the in REMS, the, the tax receivable schedule that you have as July 31st, uh, on the last page, the detail of that is actually the class of 17. As of July 31st, that's when um, the taxes have been in lien for, for two years and they are in rent eligible. And these 25 properties, it lists the outstanding taxes and the assessed value uh, of those properties as well. Those, that list and that detail has been provided to attorney, uh, in rem attorney, Dan Tartaglia by uh, the tax receiver. This, this is very healthy. It is, so, it, so this, it this is a bigger class than, than uh, 2016. What, was, what was 16? Do you remember the it total? Was, the total was uh, outstanding taxes was just, just under a million dollars. So right. there's, there's some bigger properties there. <laughs> it's three, it, there's three more in REMS. There's 25 versus 22, yeah, but the sense. outstanding taxes is, is uh, substantially more just because there's some bigger properties on here, uh, the tax base. So they, generally when it's, it gets to this list, it's three years worth of, worth of outstanding taxes, which is roughly, it usually comes out to about 15% of the assessed value uh, at that point. You know, I, I agree with with uh, with Councilwoman Jackson. You know, obviously, um, you know, we started the process with uh, Attorney Noto, who cleaned up a lot. Um, but I, I definitely, I mean, looking at a list like this, you know, the, the current uh, the current town attorney, Mr. Binder, is you know, he's, he's inheriting, you know, the process just just as as it was uh, in the beginning. I mean, it's. Uh, No, I, 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 you know, I, I, I just, no, I, I understand that. What I'm saying is that we started the process and that it's, it's not stopping. Well, that, we don't, <laughs> that, right. That it's continuing. We don't, we don't have any control yeah. over people who don't pay their taxes. That's their decision to make. But once it comes to the attention of the town, and especially to the receiver of taxes, that it is at the three-year period, then it becomes a legal matter that the receiver turns over to the attorney to start legal process on. So that's what Davey means with the class of 2017. These are the people who have not paid the taxes and it's going to be moving from the very nice letters that Mr. Mecca sends out, please pay your taxes, uh, and you have penalties, so please save yourself some money and pay. Am I correct, Nick? That's basically what you say. To be turned over to the attorney who sends notices that basically say, you haven't paid your taxes, and if you don't pay, we're going to take your property. So that, that's the shift. And, and that uh, I'm so, and that first correspondence from the interim attorney results in a certain percentage of those properties right. immediately paying up. So that that list of 25 properties could shrink by half, and people realize they got to pay, and they'll correct. They'll pay. Correct. I guess what I was trying to gauge and where I was getting at is that when we started the process, there were the first time it was done eight years ago, there were a significant amount of properties. 98 and each year it kind of seems like once those 98 were weeded out right. there yeah. becomes less yeah, but but the key Lindsay is not how many people are on the initial list mm -hmm. because as I said earlier it's how many we have no we have no control over people who don't pay their taxes what we do have control is to make sure that when <coughs> the time limit is is attained that we don't let them sit, that we start to file legal proceedings immediately because otherwise the 25 become 50, become 75, become 100 because the attorney hasn't started legal proceedings. So this is a team effort. Nick starts it and uh, uh, the, you know, the interim attorney follows it up and then ultimately we go to auction and uh, and receive payment one way or the other. They either pay their taxes or, or we take the property and, and sell the property. I have another question. 
sure. that I'm hesitant to ask, but um, I also saw here, not dealing with in-rem, but um, the final item on the variances page, and that's W, an increase in health insurance costs, um, are, which we need to do. It's important. I agree. Um, what kind of notice did we get from the health insurance company that it was going to increase, and how do we sort of, do we build in for next year sort of that possibility of it increasing, or do we stay with the there, current rate? They, they give us plenty of notice. We get notices from NIMR about what they expect mm -hmm. the rate will be in 2018, and that varies from, from period to period, but... Um, they do give us plenty of notice. The question is what alternatives do we have? Um, there is a, a, um, a shared services initiative afoot um, that um, I actually just got an email about that from Jerry Fiala um, mm -hmm. just this week. Um, we are, quote, too small, but he's, I asked for us to take a look anyway and see if there is a way that they could include us. So. Yeah, we'll be asking the questions. And th so then that would be Mr. Fiel is the association of He's, yes, towns his, or the municipal. No, it's a, it's a separate, it's actually a, um, it's a, a co-op consortium yeah. of municipalities that are, have basically doing their own, gone their own way and left NYSHIP. Oh. Yeah, this is, by the way, this is an item that's been discussed with uh, shared services uh, at the county level, as you all may be aware, uh, Governor Cuomo and the state legislature have required every county to submit a shared services plan, and uh, and that is ongoing. And in fact, I think the la the, the voting meeting will be in September what 15th, something like that. We just yes. got an email about yep. that uh, yesterday. Um, and one of the topics that was discussed at the, the couple of meetings that we did have countywide was ways to save on health insurance because every municipality is faced with that problem, big or small, from Yonkers to the town of Rye. No, I, I love the concept of shared services because I think that's really a way to go to make an impact and for taxpayers. We're seeing an increase straight across the board. We've seen it in the not-for-profit as well as the for-profit mm -hmm. community, and the increases we're seeing are 12 to 14. Percent, I'm sorry, 12 to 24 percent increase in health insurance costs. So we will factor that in in the 2018 budget. We'll look at what the increases have been historically for us, and then if we have information for shared costs and so forth. But that will definitely be an area that will get a lot of attention. Uh, with next year's budget, given that we really don't know at this point what those increases are going to be. I know there's a lot of sort of uncertainty in that area, mm -hmm. so anything we can do to sort of protect ourselves or give ourselves a cushion. Right. Next year. Well, sure. could we also have the opportunity to modify our, our, uh, our, um, our staff? You know, are there any, uh, you know, uh, we have an excess of full-time employees that are that are receiving uh, benefits uh, that maybe uh, we can identify uh, to break it down into part-time positions to help eliminate that burden. Opportunity. Do we offer a buyout if someone doesn't take the health insurance? We do. We have uh, three employees that take advantage of that buyout. Can I ask what that is? Fifteen hundred dollars. And year. do we shop this? In other words, do we shop um, health insurance or do we stay with the same consortium and are we bound to the same group? I, I don't believe we're bound. Um, I have not shopped it in the year and a half I've been with the government. but No, if it's reasonable, I'm not suggesting we do. I just I, I didn't know if, if it was something that we're, we're kind of tied to a certain consortium or if there are others out there that do similar things. I know of the two. I know that of NYSHIP and I've mm -hmm. heard of the consortium, but I can, you know, it's, it's an easy thing to put out a, um, you know, a, an email to the municipal administrator's listserv mm -hmm. and ask. Um, I will get, 
I'm sure I'll get responses immediately. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful group. But it's also important to keep in mind the well-being of the employees, especially if they're, you know, accustomed to a certain provider and then make them switch every year or every other year to switch doctors. And That's scary. Yeah, we, <coughs> by we the don't way, we do did, that to them. We did just switch dental providers this past April uh, because um, our provider, the costs were going up over 20 percent. And um, our broker was able to find us um, an equivalent plan to what we had for, we were basically flat. Um, I've received a couple of complaints, but it's largely been a non-event to my knowledge. The, the, health, the health plan that the town has, do they give the employees a choice of different packages or is it just one? Because I know where my wife works um, with her health plan, she had three different packages that she was able to choose from. No, we, no. There's only one, just one health package. plan. Yeah. There is a dental plan and a no. vision plan. No, no, no. What I'm saying, their health plan, or the hospitalization plan, they had different tiers. Got and it. she was able to pick which yeah. tier because they pay into it also. She pays into a percentage. Mm -hmm. And so we a were able as to As do our employees. Pay. Okay. Um, uh, employees who uh, started working before 2008 contribute 15% yeah. and employees who started working at electeds after 2008 contribute 25%. Yeah. I'm not sure what percentage my wife weighs, but it's, it's up there. <laughs> All insurance is up there. Well enough for everybody. Um, any further questions on, on the uh, Financial report. Um, we have uh, the superintendent of highways report has been submitted. Uh, town clerk, your report has been submitted. Do you have anything else to add? I just like to remind the public that um, on August 26th, that's a Saturday between 10 and 1 p.m. The uh, county shredder will be at 222 Grace Church Street in the parking lot. And um, just for the residents to feel free to bring anything to be shred. What date is that? August 26th? August, Saturday, August 26th. August 26th. 26th. Okay, 26th. 26th. Around what time? <laughs> what time? From what, what? 10 to 1. 10, 10 to 1. 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, Hope. That's a That's a... That's a good thing to know because um, people should mm -hmm. be shredding as yes. much as possible. <laughs> a lot of people have been calling, wondering good. if we were going to set up something. Excellent. Thank you. Town Attorney, any other report? Nothing further. Thank you. Uh, comments from council persons? Anybody with anything else to say? Mr. Baxter. I would um, just like to take a few minutes to, uh, to highlight the fact that we're doing some, some really great work. We've reconstituted the town's sustainability committee. Um, this was something that was passed uh, the prior board back in 2014, I believe, um, and has um, met on occasion, but we're really trying to reinvigorate it. Um, and we have reconstituted the committee. We've met uh, once in July, once in August already. We have another meeting next week. And thereafter, we're looking to meet monthly. We have two representatives from Fort Chester, Kathy Rosenfeld and Bob Johnson. Uh, from Rye Brook, we have Ashley Weldy and Catherine Husseini. And we also have a representative from Rye City Sustainability Committee sitting with us because they have uh, a very dynamic sustainability committee. And part of uh, what we have all talked about is learning from each other and, and tapping into the expertise of people that have served on sustainability. Who, who's, um, who's that? Person from uh, her city. name is Patty Caparelli, great. Uh, and she's been on their sustainability for some time. So we've had some great discussions. We're working on a mission statement along with some action steps that we want to take as, as a result in trying to achieve that mission statement. Recently, the town of Rye became a 200th uh, registered climate smart community, which is fantastic. Uh, the next step is for us to become a certified climate smart community, uh, which is a pretty significant undertaking. There are a series of steps we have to take. And just for some perspective, Sullivan County in New York just recently became the state's 15th certified climate smart community. So you can see there are 200 registered, but only 15 certified. 
So it is pretty strenuous, um, but it's exciting work. Uh, it's a good group. Uh, we've gotten together a few times. We've gotten to know each other. We're working on the mission. Uh, and the mission really is going to include um, promoting clean energy initiatives uh, among our residents, uh, an educational component, because quite frankly, part of our role, we see it as a town sustainability committee as opposed to a village, is to, is to offer workshops and seminars and bring in guest speakers to talk about those kinds of things, and also fostering intermunicipal collaboration. You know, where, where can the villages work together? Where can the school districts work together? So um, it's an exciting initiative. I give the supervisor a lot of credit. This was a thought he had um, early on in his tenure, and uh, it's exciting to see it take off. Uh, Debbie's been instrumental. Judy Eisenberg's been instrumental. Um, so it's a good group to get together with. So I just wanted to put that out to everybody that we're, we're well at work. Thanks, Tony. I, I may have had an idea, but you have put it into <laughs> operation. You, you get all the credit, not well, me. No, everybody else does. Um, we need somebody from Ryan Neck, though, don't we? We do, and we are looking for two representatives from Ryan Neck. If, if we uh, can, yeah. can have any ideas, send the them our way. The person I want from Ryan Neck doesn't want to, <laughs> I don't think is able to do it. Um, but I had spoken to Debbie, and I think we have to pick up that conversation further. Yeah. I asked her. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> So we'll work on that. We'll, we'll keep working on it. Anything further? Uh, Billy, yeah, just, Tommy? Uh, just come out to Crawford Park on September 10th. By then, all the planting should be done, and the playground is absolutely beautiful, and have your kids go out there and enjoy themselves. Cool. That's Sorry. it. Lindsay, anything? You know, it's just been a great summer, and I'm excited to hear that the park at Crawford is being used on a regular basis. Um, when we put in the playground, you know, you get nervous as to what the community response is going to be. Is it going to be used? And it's just really exciting to hear that it's such a popular. It is. Um, Heartwarming playground. when you see all the kids playing there. Yeah. The next step we have in Crawford, uh, other than the physical work uh, that's already being planned, is we really need to put together a committee uh, of stakeholders to determine what we're going to do with the playing fields. That is going to be a key component. We've been working on our structures, our pavilion, our mansion, playground, etc. Now we need to concentrate on the future of our playing fields. What are they going to be used for? Baseball, the diamond is in horrific shape, but we're not going to spend a lot of money if it's not going to be used. Football, soccer, lacrosse, concerts. Golf, frisbee. Golf, frisbee. And the best idea so far. Oh, okay. No, the best idea so far, and I credit this to Tom Nardi, a bocce court. <laughs> wow. um, That's easy to put in, and I think we can get a lot of use out of that. I, I forgot to mention that um, we applied to NYU Wagner Graduate School of Public Service to get a capstone team working on issues for Crawford, and we've made it to the next round. So we've been invited to present um, first week of September. Great. Terrific. Okay. Anybody else? Not motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>